Hello everybody and welcome back to one of these videos. My name is Kaylin and I read creepy rated stories that I find online. If you have any experiences uh, or stories you'd like to share with the channel, please let me know and I will do a recording of them and have them here. So without trying to be weird, you know. But if you like these kind of videos, please let me know and in any way, please enjoy today's video. I've only been living here at Snow College for a couple of months, but something strange is definitely happening here. For context, I am part Native American of the Lakota Sioux Tribe, and I'm trying to reconnect with that part of my heritage as I have moved out and away from my parents. I always believed in the existence of skinwalkers, but the events that have transpired over the past couple of months have solidified it for me. At first, the occurrences started out small, hearing footsteps, growling in the bushes, etc. But as the weeks have gone on, they have gotten to be bigger and bigger. It all came to a head Saturday night when I get a frantic text from a good friend of mine saying that he's messed up big time and scared shitless. Now this friend of mine is very imposing dude, 6'2 and around 280, and he grew up around Baltimore so it takes a lot to scare him. So he is going through and telling me what happened and what he saw. A couple of blocks away from the main campus. They're building a new temple, and this friend loves to walk around the area at night. According to him, just past the one street light on this road, he could see a massive dog pacing back and forth, east to west. He described it as a dog with a posture of a bear, tone build, obviously with no discernible fur on it, like it was completely in silhouette. So of course I do some research and see the accounts of the Sherman family on their ranch. And Gwen's description of a wolf slash dog she ran into sounds eerily similar to what my friend saw. What my friend neglects to tell me until we were out there again last night is that he was whistling on his walk. As we approached the spot where he saw it the night before, sitting under the street light was the creature. It was exactly like he described it. Huge dog, posture of a bear, pointy ears, smoothest skin I've seen on a wild animal ever. We're both rightfully spooked, so we head back towards campus. As we're walking past the humanities building, he tells me that it was around this spot where he was seeing shadow figures. He described them as having distinct human forms, and hearing what sounded like a huge animal running at him. He came across a bald eagle feather in the middle of the sidewalk. There haven't been any bald eagle sightings in airframe from what I know. We hung out on campus for a while after our encounter by the temple grounds, and we both were able to come to a conclusion that there was almost like a line across campus that the sightings would stop. Against my better judgement, I'm planning on going out there again later tonight to see if I could maybe get any pictures of this thing for concrete evidence that we both saw something, and that it was just our nerves getting to us. Right, so I've got a story. I've lived in Florida most of my life until October 2020 when I moved to upstate SC. Lived with my grandparents in the mountains around Salem for a little while before moving to an outer suburb of Greenville. The backyard of my house in Greenville had a downward slope and a creek at the bottom, then an upward slope on the other side leading to another set of houses. The creek led into a large pad of woods, one more house down past mine, a good 50-ish acres. Not long after moving in, I went and explored the creek and found a small shard of pottery half buried in the ground. It was dark greenish and had a few basic floral designs on it. I brought it inside because I was planning to contact the nearby university to ask if it had any significance, but I never actually got around to doing it. One day shortly after that, sitting on my back porch around noon, I started hearing whistles. Like some guy was calling his dog or something but it was the exact same tone and melody every single time. It never changed. I looked around and didn't see anyone, but I could pinpoint where the sound was coming from. It was coming from the patch of woods down by the creek the first couple times I heard it, then slowly moved out of the woods and into the backyard of the house behind mine. Again I didn't see anyone, and it was still the same whistle, almost like it was a recording on repeat. 
This happened every couple of days for a few weeks. Always the same exact whistle and no one else to be seen but me. I didn't think anything of it at the time until I moved again late last year to Spartanburg County. Obviously I won't say exactly where I am, but I'm in the northern part in a very rural area. Plenty of woods around, along with plenty of coyotes and other wildlife. I hadn't heard the whistle in a long while, probably about a year. A couple weeks ago, I was sitting outside my house, about 9pm, doing a bonfire. I heard a pack of coyotes go nuts around a quarter mile away, which isn't unusual, so I didn't think anything of it. After a couple of minutes, they went completely silent and I didn't hear any other wildlife, not even crickets. Then, out of nowhere, I hear the exact same whistle again. It was coming from a ditch next to the road in front of my house about 30 yards from where I was sitting. I froze and sat there listening as I knew that this time, something was up. Why am I hearing the exact same whistle as I've heard in the backyard of a previous house over an hour's drive away? I waited another few minutes and heard it one more time, then silence. Another few minutes passed and the usual wildlife and crickets started going again. The rest of the night I felt watched, and now every time I go out at night, I feel the same way. I don't know if it's a walker for sure, considering all I've got are a few identical whistles, but it's definitely not normal. Whatever it might be, there's no doubt it followed me from Greenville over an hour away. I tried ruling it out by saying it's birds, but the timing is just way too irregular. Sure, I'd be hearing it more often, right? Instead of a few times last summer, and then not at all the middle of September, a year later. Looking for answers on what it might be, and what to do about it, if anything. As far as the pottery shard, it was left in the closet at the previous house in Greenville, which has now been rented out by another tenant. A few years ago I moved into a new house out in a wooded area with lots of wildlife. I'm pretty familiar with most of the wildlife in the area and can recognize their calls when I hear them, but a few months after I moved in, I started hearing a strange noise a few nights a week that I could only describe as a screeching child mixed with a wounded rabbit. At first I just wrote it off as just one of the many noises you hear now and then when you live in the middle of nowhere. That was until it started happening every night. I tried to ignore it for a while, and that worked until I started to notice some weird things on my trail cams. My trail cams are set up to take three pictures every time they trigger. At first it was sets of photos, where there would be something like a coyote in the first frame and then the next frame would be a rabbit in the same spot. And if you know anything about a predator-prey relationship, there's no way a rabbit would be following that close to a coyote. But a little while after that started, I started getting pictures of just a black blur shooting across the frame that would only appear in one of the three pictures I've taken where it was triggered. I've talked to some of the people that live near the same area and they've mentioned that there is rumored to be an Indian burial ground near the area and since the area intersects the trail of tears it is entirely possible. But since all of this stuff has started happening, I've noticed that when I go to check my trail cams, I can take the exact routes every time and end up in an entirely different spot. And I don't know if that's something skinwalkers can do or it's paranoia but I was wondering if anyone here might have some answers. I recently started working for a local company here in Juno AK as a directive service provider and have been working with my manager to get a group home ready for clients to move in back on November 18th. And we'd work odd hours there or it would be myself there alone or I'd ask to bring my dog since no one lived there yet. I occasionally saw footprints by the house that didn't match anyone's shoes, so I thought someone was screwing with us until I recently got a call from my manager, asking if I had heard what sounded like children outside when I work overnights at the group home. I said no, and she informed me that my other staff had heard what sounded like children outside, and they stupidly went outside to see and saw different footprints, and then what my son had left the day before. And to answer the question, I can only think everyone is asking yes. He made back inside safe and stayed inside till the client was picked up by his right to go to work. Myself and the other staff haven't had any weird experiences like this on other nights. Could he have heard a skinwalker? On October 21st, 2022, at 
11.20 p.m., I was camping at a popular campground in Oklahoma called Marvel Camping Resort. I was sitting by the fire pit with only embers burning. I was watching TikTok sitting alone when suddenly all the hairs on my body stood on end. I look around and see nothing, but can hear rocks being pushed around by something walking on them. I go back to watching TikTok when the sounds of the rocks start getting closer. Within 30 yards of me, I get a dangerous feeling. I start looking around and see a dark shadow moving slowly. It walked on all fours, and it's back coming up to my head while I'm sitting down. Once I notice it, it slowly moves behind a cabin out of my view. My first thought was, someone's dog got out and was roaming. After roughly four minutes, I get the sensation of being watched again, and look towards where I saw the creature. The creature bolts down by the river into some bushes, just ten yards away from me. While I was running, I caught a glimpse of it. It appeared fairly smooth, grey, and moved quickly on all four legs. I immediately got up and moved onto the front porch of my cabin. After moving, I still had the sensation of being watched, and everything in my body told me to go inside. So I did. I continually heard noises coming from outside the cabin the rest of the night. Did I see a skinwalker, or was it something else? It was about 8.30pm. While taking out the trash at work with a co-worker slash roommate, a large dog approached us. It seemed to be galloping. It wasn't walking normally, like an animal should. Despite the many surrounding lights, the dog appeared to be entirely black. It was silhouetted just enough that you could see its muscle definition. I could see a slight reflection in its eyes. It seemed to lack a shadow. My roommate and I both expressed having different experiences and visions of the dog. When I initially saw the dog, I interacted saying, Aw, dog, in excitement. For me, it proceeded to sit entirely still on the cement staring, like a statue. What I saw was a large fluffy black dog lazy ears, similar to a Newfoundland dog. My roommate expressed to seeing the dog as large, very muscular, aggressive looking black dog that stood rigid the entire time, seemed like it wanted to attack. It was short haired, muscled and had pointed ears. I jokingly stated that dog looked like a skinwalker, not really anticipating that anything would happen. Then we immediately felt a wake of dread fall over us. Something was wrong. We both saw the dog's jaw open, almost as if it was about to bark. We heard a distant yet extremely clear, high-pitched, Come here! The dog immediately turned to take off. We turned around the corner. The creature was unreasonably far up the road for the short amount of time that it was not being observed. It was wobbling, crossing its paws, walking oddly. When it turned around a corner, it seemed to nearly stand up on hind paws, walking on two legs just before passing around out of sight. The rest of the night was just as interesting. We had trouble with certain objects slightly moving place, nudging a bit, settling. It quickly became more aggressive. But then, just as we were about to leave, we heard a loud and persistent knocking coming from the front of the store. We quickly went to our cars. On the drive home, I tried to blast music and ignore what I had just seen. I heard whispers coming from my back seat. I couldn't quite make out any words. It just sounded like whistling almost. But get this. I saw a random antique claw food bathtub on the left side of the road in a field. It was certainly not there the day before. Or even that morning on my drive there. The kicker? I was watching the sidelines of the road for any animals. And I most certainly saw a buck. He was leaping out in front of the road, a good 50 feet ahead. I stand on my brakes, but when I got closer, it was merely a bush. Perhaps I was just paranoid, but this is all very concerning. And that's it for today's video. If you liked it, please let me know which story was your favorite. If you'd like me to do more of these, please give it a like and also subscribe. It does help the channel quite a lot. And then I can also just focus on this full time and do it more professionally. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> if you have any stories you'd like to share with me that I can put on the channel, please let me know. You can even contact me on Instagram if you need to. In the description is a Patreon link if you would like to support the channel. But that's it for now and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.